I, I mean, yeah, or just like the Van Gogh experience or the. These, mm, like, I did do that. I did actually go through the Van Gogh. It's experience. a screensaver. It is. It's a giant screensaver for Van Gogh, <laughs> and you can go there and sit there and be immersed in the world of Van Gogh and 3D. You no, know, you can do that by looking at the painting, actually, <laughs> which is like 30 blocks up away from your Van Gogh experience. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Lucky Time Explosion. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. What's up, everybody? Welcome you back. You guys didn't warn me about this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. We just dropped that on you hard. Yeah, sorry. It's a mo- it's a morning like zoo crew radio show. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My 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 energy needs to go up way <laughs> higher. Yeah, we're gonna prank call all your family later with a fart box. Oh, nice. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> welcome back to Lucky Time Explosion. Your news for art chatter, interviews with local artists, uh, and a bunch of other nonsense. Welcome back. It's been a minute. Good to yeah, see everybody. It's, it's been a minute. I, you know, spring this on you right away. Uh, I'm back from hemorrhoid surgery. That's nice. And it was good. You, you start off strong. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> not I, for the faint of heart. And I can just tell y'all that uh, is, if this is an operation that you have to get, you're not going to be happy. No. Oh, well, I, was ex- I was excited for mine. Right. But we should introduce our guest today. We have the amazing Dan Rosen with us. Thank yeah. You. yeah thank totally you for normal joining. butthole. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't have a stitch hanging out of his. No, no issues. Thank goodness. No, me neither. Me neither. Uh, well, it is holiday time again, and we have a few holidays today on this lovely Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Today is Monte Cristo Day. That's internet or national Monte Cristo Day. Yeah, really? Have you ever had a Monte Cristo sandwich? You know what that is? No, but I've met a man named Monte, and he was covered in Crisco. That's close enough. I would think so. Yeah. I don't think it counts. Really? Mm. Sorry. Buzzed out. I've never had this sandwich. What's in this sandwich? It's a egg batter, deep fried ham and egg sandwich. That a ham and good. cheese sandwich. That sounds, that's a good. That's a good day. Yeah. Very. It was started Ooh. by a restauranteer who wanted to drum up more, like you know, business for his uh, cafe. Mm. Which are is, there any rules for getting a day? Like, no. is there a mm. is there a congressional like uh, committee? Do you have to submit an application like a patent? We were talking about this because we need to get our own, right? We do these day mm. reads, and uh, they're all so stupid. And it's when's uh, it podcast seems, day? There's definitely is one. I, I can guarantee. I you. think that Jamie, think there look is. it up. Every day is podcast day. <laughs> podcast holiday. I bet you there is. Let's see. Nope. No, we better everyone, everyone, everyone hates podcasting, actually. I, we, just, I just read here the podcasting's dead. Oh, shit, what are we doing? Show canceled. We're <laughs> dancing on the grave of podcasts. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, the other holiday today is National Pet Carbon Monoxide Safety Day. That hmm. sounds like a really fun one. Uh, that's what like- had to happen for that? Someone felt really bad. Just one person (laughs) really fucked up (laughs) and killed their whole menagerie of pets. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They they, they turned the stove on, they left, and all 50 cats passed away. Yeah. It's been, it's relatively new, it looks like. It's been celebrated just since September 17th. Celebrated in 2020. Yeah, it does. Do you celebrate celebrate it by uh, gassing pets? Is that how you're supposed (laughs) to celebrate it? I have a pretty crazy story, actually, that's similar to that. Um, I did a moving job. Uh, not well, no <laughs> no okay. um, although space. i did i did have uh when i was a kid i'd had two hamsters ren and stimpy mm. and ren and stimpy had babies and then ren and stimpy ate their babies mm. as they do that was so fucked up it was like twitching the little bones coming out it's really horrible did yeah. you film it and put it on i did i you, did on youtube i'm old i didn't <laughs> even have i had I, I couldn't get my vhs uh, my my camcorder ready in time I'm like looking through I know, (laughs) right? That would be sad. I started to read more about this to try and find it and listen to the first sentence in this description of uh, uh, Pet Carbon Monoxide Safety Day. Since they first learned to handle fire in the year 800,000 BC, humans have had a complicated relationship with carbon monoxide. And pets. <laughs> that just goes so hard. That's like way too yeah. much backstory. From time immemorial, <laughs> for the man be- has been drawn to the terrifying wonders of the flame. <laughs> the first time this was suggested was in <laughs> 7,000 million BC when Kronk accidentally forgot to turn off the campfire and his T-Rex didn't wake up. So sad, oh, dude. That is sad. That's rough. 
Well, that is a sad and a weird one. <laughs> and lastly, uh, there, there's a very vague one today, too. It's called Time's Up Day. Now, if you, if you had to guess what the hell that's about, what would National Time's Up Day be? Like, that's when you shed your mortal coil? Like, <laughs> game yeah. over, well, you're done. My guess was, um, like, Tess Proctor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, the guy in the back who, who like, tells Who's you like, when the test down. is ready. Yeah, Pencils yeah. down. And that person gets no love in society. That's true. You're right. That's Everyone true. hates that guy. He's reviled. You, yeah, because yeah, he, he's trying to catch you cheating. And you're Ugh. like, go away. I'm just texting. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is normal texting, not math texting. No, actually, apparently, this is all about being the bigger person. Because it's awfully easy to drift apart with people over a little disagreement. So, uh, why is it to... called Time's Up? Time's Up on what? Me not being the bigger person? <laughs> right. Yeah. This is Time's Up on our relationship. It, we've drifted away. So, this is to celebrate officially ending your friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Very poorly I think phrased. I think it's supposed to be about like um, getting together because life's too short to be on bad terms with a friend, parent, or colleague. Uh, someone who used to be your close acquaintance, especially if they're important to you. So just get it over with and don't sever them your, entirely. Don't <laughs> punch your mom in the face. Get along with it. I think if someone called me and be like, hey, I know we haven't talked in years, but I'm going to be the bigger person. I'd be like, fuck, I'm get, I want to be, I'm the bigger person. How, come, how do you decide who gets to be the bigger person in this right. situation? That would cause another fight between me and this friend. Maybe we need a third party. Definitely. It's like, this is the problem with you. You're always trying to be the bigger person. You never let me be the bigger person. And then you have to fight again until the next time's up day. If someone right. called me on and was like, hey, it's national time's up day. So I want to reconnect with you because I haven't heard of you. I'd be like, who are you? Why do you know about this holiday? What is going on? I would be very suspicious. Well, they have a podcast where they they need to fill time. And so they look up uh, the holidays and they're very aware. Right. It's me, Mike. Remember me from third grade? <laughs> uh, call, call up all your old classmates, Dave. I stuck day. a pencil in your ass and now you have hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how I got mine. Mine is a worse story. I'm not even going to tell my story. You can imagine all different things. You don't want to hear. For the rest of this podcast, <laughs> imagine his anus. Yeah. <laughs> and its journey through time. Uh, <laughs> I was told it looks like an octopus now. <laughs> National Octopus Fucking Anus socks. Day. Can you fry it and then it's like a little calamari situation? <laughs> oh, I may have to. If there's a, a, Dip it in some marinara sauce for the, for the ladies. Fuck my life. Well, the thing is, they told me to like, if this doesn't get taken care of, it could become cancerous. And when they told me that, I was like, well, like, I better start taking this shit seriously. No pun intended. Right. It's like when you have hemorrhoid surgery, you realize that like all puns have to do with acids. What are the symptoms of hemorrhoids? You just bleed a lot? Oh, it was so bad. But I got these pills called hemorrhoid. I'm Emory. making this oh, up. A good, I swear to God. That's a good name. And it's specifically, I don't know how it works. It's got herbs and spices and this and that and the other thing. But somehow it just locked up those little fucking fissures. Herbs locked and spices? Little, well, they're seasoning your butt. They're not There's all sorts of shit in there. It's something happened and it stops the bleeding. But, you know, again, when they told me that the cancer is like, so yeah, people uh, take your asses seriously. But how, how long did you let it ride, though? Be honest. Uh, uh, way too long. So I'm surprised I didn't bleed out and die in the toilet. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so it was just like The Shining every time you took a shit? That <laughs> elevator so scene bad. in The Shining? Yeah, it was like the hallway. He flushed so many it twins. It was, pairs of twins. It, was, it was a nightmare. Maybe I you're had... just having a, um, miscarriages over and over. Oh, man. Ass miscarriages? Ass, ass carriages. <laughs> ass carriages. Well, that's what I needed after the uh, operation. I had to sit on this fancy little seat that has a hole where you're... you're Hole is so there's yeah. no pressure. Yeah, it was awesome. I sat on that hole where your hole is. Oh, like a donut. Yeah, like a special donut. Yeah, everyone loves it. Did you bring the donut to work? I didn't. I did. Damn. It's okay. You're I just I, raw dog in this chair right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I know. got past the He's leaking beast, point. Dude. I stopped leaking um, last week. Yeah, on He's Friday. A... He's a beast. He won't stop doing things. That the viewers not can't to see do. under this table, so they they can't verify. Right. Pain reminds me I'm alive. <laughs> He's actually a couple inches shorter. Yeah, He's sitting on the hemorrhoid. All right, we'll pass. I, I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, just uh, for anyone know, who's still your, listening your to your this, yeah. which I can't imagine is anybody. Let's let's talk about some art news in the city. Uh, anything exciting going on with you, Dan, lately in the city, art related wise? I mean, no, I know you get out there a lot for your content. I do get out there. Um, September's right the big the big month. All the openings. I haven't gone to see any of the the hot new shows yet, though. 
I haven't I'm either. I'm excited to hit the streets. Well, one of those hot new shows you will not be able to go see because CJ Handry's flower show on Roosevelt Island has been shut down. No! <gasps> Yep. This is the first time first time hearing about this and I'm devastated. So yeah, right. <laughs> it's, it's amazing how fast uh, we can become attached to things. Over this. I want flowers. No, so CJ Henry tried to well, they did. They success they had a show that was too successful. I guess that's why it got shut down. Uh, Roosevelt Island's kind of hard to get to. You have to take a tram or a you know, ferry over there. I've never been to, I grew up in New York and I've never been to Roosevelt Island. Oh my wait a minute. This is a good this is, might be a good segment because I've so also not been there. to a few places I definitely should have. I've what, never been what to Roosevelt is the reason, Island. I mean the only reason to go is to get what, free flowers? Yeah, to go get a free they flower. They have like concerts there a lot, Roosevelt Island, right? I, I think I saw, I'm pretty sure I saw Warp Tour like early oh, yeah. 2000s. There used to be a mental asylum. Yeah. Right. That they Clothes and they turned into like a Cornell Tech Institute, right? And they, the people just switched over. All the mental patients became uh, coders. <laughs> they they didn't kick them out. They just stayed and changed. Yeah, their like you lives. guys can either leave or become coders. <laughs> yeah. and they all became. They're all really. They all run uh, successful. Turns tech, out tech they companies. became awesome coders. They all actually ended up becoming the ones who manipulate your AI images, and that's why everything's so <laughs> fucked up looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing it, to, to make doing it manually. Yeah, it's all actually being done manually. <laughs> oh, but CJ Hendry's show was about, like, flowers. You, you could go get, like, a, and I think they're handcrafted, like, plushy flowers. Like, they're not real ones, uh, but it looks like a, a greenhouse, and you can go in there and get one. A and clown flower? Buy like extras. Yeah, not, not the full balloon clown flower, but, like, a, more like a Meow Wolf. You know, you go to Mal, Meow Wolf, and you see that, like, a... Uh, fake store where they have all the different fake products that are like made out of like plushy and stuff like that okay it was one of those 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 are really popular right now right like we see a lot more like experiential things and like collector plushy stores in the fine art world yeah anything to get an instagram story yeah um, that that will go viral and and to prevent you from actually thinking or interacting or considering art as right. anything beyond just a photograph to share yeah that the, what do you think about that it's bl uh, bleak. I <laughs> bleak. <laughs> you don't like that. I haven't been to the ice cream museum, the museum of ice cream. I, I mean, yeah, or just like the Van Gogh experience, or the. These, mm, like, I did do that. I did actually go through the Van Gogh. It's experience. a screensaver. It is. It's a giant screensaver for Van Gogh, <laughs> and you can go there and sit there and be immersed in the world of Van Gogh and three D. You know, you can do that by looking at the painting, actually, <laughs> which is like thirty blocks up. Away from your Van Gogh experience. <laughs> it's true. There wasn't any Van Gogh in there. If you're a little child who needs extra stimuli, you can even put on music, too. You have AirPods. You can make your own little Van They won't Gogh kick you out anymore for doing that. No. I had, actually, while I was there, there was something really funny. I was standing in line and, like, buying, like, the cheapest merch I can. I wanted to get something from the gift shop, because the whole thing's a fucking gift shop, right? It's, like, yes. the whole point. So I was like, oh, I'll get this little $10, like, skull pin from his drawing of, like, the skeleton. I thought that was kind of cool. And while I'm standing in line waiting for it, somebody was like, yeah, they just, this is like, you know, it was, this gift shop's really like commercializing his work. You know, like they were just basically complaining like about you're at the Van Gogh <laughs> experience. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you're at oh. the Six Flags of Van Gogh. I think they really were expecting a, like a deep cultural uh, experience and maybe they got it in the room and they were just disappointed that there was like Bob Ross merch at the gift shop. They didn't realize, they thought they were having a genuine, maybe they thought Van Gogh really made screensavers. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I wonder if he would. I wonder how many artists out there right now are making screensavers. I mean, there are certain screensavers. I'll never forget the pipes. The pipes? Yeah. The yeah. pipes is fucking MCS amazing. designed those, I think. Oh my God. After yeah. dark. Oh, the Check flying toasters. Out. Those are the best. Or just walking through the hallways. Yeah. The bricks. Yeah. It's awesome. It's like, yeah, we used to have to do things for kids these days. They don't know about the pipes. They don't no. know about Wolfenstein 3D. They don't even know about Wolfenstein. That's true. Oh my God. <laughs> Speaking of Wolfenstein, Trump tried to get assassinated <laughs> again. <laughs> that was I'm a not... great segue. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, that was, I didn't hear about it yet. I don't know if you guys read about anything about it. It was poorly attempted, I guess. So, you know. They're not sending their best. Apparently no, not. Absolutely not. <laughs> These, they're. <laughs> the Much like time. the immigrants from Mexico, man. According need to, to Trump, they're not sending. Yeah, the CIA is really recruiting from <laughs> the bottom of the barrel. It's pretty rough, man. Good timing, though. Everyone was talking about how uh, the debate was terrible, and he lost it. So, yeah, yeah it yeah. was. Uh, she started slow, and then she, then he started talking about eating the cats and dogs, and then that, that, that oh, that, was, that's that all was anyone's going to hear. The end. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of great memes already from that. Have you? Did you see all the videos of like people watching that with their pets? 
Oh yeah, yeah. And then the pet when he starts talking about that, whether it be cats hides. or dogs, they fucking freak out. Mm. One cat literally person... launched towards the TV and bounced off the fucking TV. <laughs> the person <laughs> filming the person filming this TikTok is probably prodding them like from the other side, right? Who's that guy, Antoine Dotson? Do you remember his like hide your hide your cat, hide your oh, dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they eating everybody out here. <laughs> yeah. Hide your that. wife, hide your kids. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man! And now it's hide, hide, the, hide your cats, hide oh, your dogs. Uh, that was like the prime days of slow, show, show yo mo, show oh, yo mo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those dudes, slow mo erotic. Yeah, <laughs> slow not jam quite. the news. Not right? quite slow jam the news. Yeah, auto tune the news, which was brilliant. I thought I really liked that. Uh, speaking of brilliant, you're doing some great stuff these days. Oh, that, that, we really. Just went right from Trump. Yeah. Right Trump into it. We mind. got a tight 30 we got to do here. You, you did know? some really great stuff, including uh, try to assassinate the, pre- <laughs> the former president. <laughs> so we're here to ask you why you did this. Uh, no, I actually, I actually met Dan when uh, you were an oil painter. When I, I was. You. Yeah, you were painting oils. I was painting. I'm a failed oil painter. <laughs> so you turned a critic and comedian. I was down there in the, the gym of, of mm-hmm. our of con artist which was it was like a yeah. kind of gym for artists it was know? yeah i that's a great way to describe it I, I think it's like a great way to describe it. it was a gym you know you you paid for excess and materials and you go there and work out your creativity yeah it was a lot of fun it was yeah. it was There's, a cool um, space in an area that's been completely ruined by um it was already on the way out it was already yeah the lower east side we Ludlow were, street we were maybe we were actually the signal once no 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 <laughs> i think we were cool i think the big signal for me was the seraphina Oh yeah! As soon as the Serafina went in, we were still there doing business, and I was like, "Serafina's here! Like that's some restaurant you see at the airport." Yeah, airport restaurant. <laughs> I'm like, "Fuck, we're cooked. The neighborhood's over." <laughs> and you just see people walking around with like twenty thousand dollar handbags. Yeah, and then they did the Louis Vuitton pop up, like right across the street as well. And I was like, "There it is again." Like, yeah, this was before it was called Dime Square. That area. Yeah, that's a little further down. That's but yeah, true. That's same true. street. You just go. You keep going down a little further. Dime Square is an interesting thing. I still don't fucking understand it. But do do you know much about it? Like uh, what it was? I know it was like podcasters set up outside. and I think it was just like a a joke name for a loose um, configuration of people whose parents pay their rent so they can (laughs) write... Uh, reactionary poetry that no one reads. I think that was the main. <laughs> there, it seemed to be very politically charged on like both. It seemed like there's a lot of action going on down there. Yeah, I couldn't it's, tell. it's for people who like want to get fucked up at, at 2 p.m. on a Thursday. Oh. Um, and, but then it also immediately like whatever maybe slight artistic um, creative vanguard it was a- attempting was immediately undercut by like fancy hotels and, mm-hmm. and restaurants right that just came and, and, and co-opted it i think um, it was called that because of a there was a 99 cent store near there called dimes no it's a restaurant called dimes there's a restaurant it's a restaurant oh it's that's like right nine, that's right there's two there's like a dimes grocery and then there's it's still there that's what i was thinking of the grocery while. store that's cool yeah it, it was a funny little area that was where um lazy susan gallery was which was the second gallery started by the guy who started con artists where we were hanging out in the basement over there. i used to live with a guy that really took it to heart when that was term was used lazy susan because his mom's name was susan and he legit would get mad what yeah <laughs> he's like don't say that my mom can name we call him right now can we call she's him right not now? lazy she works real hard to give me a great life <laughs> jesus christ she's a good woman Let's let's prank call Susan right I now. I like that level of, of wokeness. <laughs> yeah. That is extreme, yeah. Debbie Downer. Uh um No. I'm my, the happiest person ever. Fuck you. My, my wife's name is Debbie. <laughs> yes, she's a bummer. But. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, tell me more about how you went to making the transition from like painting to doing comedy. Like when did you start her? Because I know you've been doing it for a while, been watching you, uh, but you've been popping off lately. Uh, well, even when I was um at, at Conrad's painting i i was doing open mics at mm-hmm. the same time and actually was, were you painting and doing open mics at the same time i was not bob ross <laughs> i was improvising a <laughs> painting um yeah i i have two minutes i have a tight two minutes and i'm going to uh paint this tree that's a good bit <laughs> <laughs> but you have to do comedy at the same time that's yeah. the thing a bit i tried once i i do new yorker cartoons and i used to try a bit where i would um test them out on the audience but i would just say the caption and then i would just be like well you, you kind of need the pic- the picture you need <laughs> so it's a cat and he's saying that's not me and then no one would laugh <laughs> and then it's like no but okay, you need the- if you saw the picture you guys would laugh <laughs> 
So I, I would probably like, it would probably take me like five minutes, but then you'd hear one like a fall from the yeah, back yeah. of the room. There are diminishing me. returns to this joke. Yeah. How is that? Like you, your stuff's kind of, um, you know, I don't say it's like overly intellectual, but it's definitely smart and it's funny. And like sometimes being smart while you're being funny doesn't help, doesn't get the room going. It does not get the room going at all. Yeah. Uh, people think you're pretentious yeah. and, um, and they want the guy who makes fart jokes. <laughs> Uh, it depends. You know, there are certain certain rooms and certain you, you kind of read the vibe. I feel like I have a big enough repertoire of of jokes that I kind of listen to what the audience laughed at from what the host is saying. Mm. And before previous comedians, you can kind of gauge like what they find funny, where they're from. Um, you know, if you're performing in like a weird art space in Brooklyn, you can kind of get away with um snootier intellectual references right uh, you can joke they'll, about they'll like, at least pretend to laugh like pretend to get it right yeah they'll, yeah, they'll laugh and they'll be like oh. but yeah i mean i perform at the comedy cellar and that's definitely a much more um that's a great venue yeah, yeah it's really fun but it's definitely more touristy what more, venues in brooklyn do you dig when you when you do perform there um i like union hall I perform union, union awesome. hall oh, yeah. a bunch and that usually has like good um good crowds i'm trying to think what else how about I, the cobra is it called the cobra club cobra club is cool I've seen a lot of good comedy shows there. I, I ran into Eric Andre uh, there once and I just gave him, you know, I was excited. I was like, oh, cool. I gave him like a fist pound. In my, it was with my brother who was like crazy and, and wild and out there. And he's like, Eric, I got this idea. And blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. And he's like, awesome. Here's my email. Email me. So my brother is like, God, this is going to be awesome. You know, he emails him and like within minutes, it's like, this email does not exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, there you go. That's such a good move. <laughs> It is a good move. What did they go to find you again? It was like Eric Andre at ericandre.com or something. <laughs> like that. oh, that's funny. It should have just responded like, you're not funny. <laughs> I, they, yeah, no, that was I did. The closest I've ever gotten to that <laughs> is I sat next to Tim Robinson at a restaurant um, in LA. And I really did have a good idea for an I think you should leave sketch. Mm, yeah. Um, I love him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's great. And then I was like, I... I want to tell you this, but I know that you're stopped constantly on the street by assholes who thinks they have great ideas for your sketch. It's right. like, what if you're like a weird guy who finds like a thing really annoying? <laughs> and so I didn't need to, I didn't need to add to that. So I'll just take it to my grave. Okay. <laughs> you're not going to spill the beans. No, on here. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. We'll, no, we'll steal it. We'll steal it then. Yeah. You're going to end up watching. You're never going to tell him and you'll, you'll see it on the show one day and he'll be yeah. like, it went into my mind. You stole my aura at the this Thai time. restaurant. What, how is that like, um, I feel like artists and stand-ups both have a kind of weird relationship with like stealing material, right? Or referencing each other. Like, is it, do you find it similar at all? Yeah, I feel like it's much more okay in art. Yeah. Because it's more... Um, like self-referential? Yeah, it's more clearly self-referential and it, like there's a whole kind of uh, lineage of appropriation Right. Um, art, whether it's like whatever Richard Prince or mm. um, all those picture generation um, or, you know, copying literally or doing homage and then doing your own spin on it. Um, and I think it's much more acceptable. I feel like the people who don't like it are the people whose work is yeah. being appropriated. Yeah, usually. Like what there was that big scandal recently because I think like Vogue, one of the for Prince's death anniversary they wanted to use um a photo uh, a painting that warhol did of prince right yeah i do remember this um and they got the license from the warhol foundation but then the photographer who took the photo that warhol based off of um said that no she also needs like to be paid and approved um because she only agreed or or i guess she said she didn't even really agree to warhol using it so then right. it like went to the Supreme Court oh, and man. you wow. had these like stuffy old, <laughs> you like Amy Comey Barrett, like yeah. <laughs> discussing issues of like appropriation and what is, um, you know, trying to. What is uh, art? Yeah. What is art and what is like transforming something yeah. and What's you know, what is just co or not? copying yeah. or, and that's such a bizarre category that I feel like is not in the purview of the Supreme Court <laughs> justices. I don't think they teach that at Yale Law School, but. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's got to be. Whereas it. in comedy, what you can steal and people often do is like an essence, the essence of a bit. Like so you'll see, or a comedian. So like mm. you'll see a lot of people oh. doing Mitch Hedberg, oh. but they're not doing Mitch Hedberg mm. jokes. Right, you know? right. They're just trying or to do the. There's a girl Louis. on TikTok. 
You know that Mitch Hedberg girl on TikTok? No. What she she's do? pretty funny, but she's like, she's pretty funny and she seems to be like, have her own material. She seems smart and makes her own good jokes, but like is literally like doing a Mitch Hedberg impression. Yeah. And like she, looks like. does she say it openly or? No, but I, I think she does kind of like acknowledge it. She doesn't like deny it or, or hide or anything, but it's just the comments are filled with like, oh, you're female Mitch Hedberg, you're female Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. I mean, when you're starting out, and I'd say this is the same when you're yeah. an artist, like you don't know how to have your own voice so you do kind of start off copying right. people you admire or imitating and then eventually you figure out like what you want want to say or you get better and you kind of shed shed that who are your like top uh, favorite some of your biggest influences comedy wise uh bill cosby um louis c no yeah <laughs> bill cosby <laughs> louis ck <laughs> yeah i mean um my biggest influence i definitely hedberg was really big for me when i was in high school mm. Um, probably Chris Rock. I listen to. It's weird because like these people, I don't think you can really see it in my comedy clearly, but those mm. are the people who I listened to the most when I was growing up and just thinking about how to form, mm. um, how to form a joke. So ho hopefully you can't watch my stand up and like see the influences, but right, definitely like there are moves. You know, I feel like um. Francis Ford Coppola would talk about it when he would get stuck. He'd be like, "Oh, what would Elia Kazan do?" And you just kind of like think, "Like, how would I solve this per problem right, as right, someone right. else?" And even if you think you're like stealing it, in just because it's coming from you and your interpretation of it, it actually won't be apparent to to anyone else because you're you're twisting it so much right. to your own experience. I think for me, when I was young, uh, Eddie Murphy, Raw and Delirious were like really big for me because he did everything. It wasn't just comedy. He entertained. He danced. He said he did, he did everything. And I, uh, he had such a full, funny yeah. show. Um, for me, that was definitely... How about you, Brandon? How about you? For comedy? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love uh, George Carlin. I love, you know, yeah, Bill Hicks. Yeah, I listen to Carlin a lot. Yeah, I, I, I like so many. Emo Phillips. Yeah, he's an interesting one. One of my all-time favorite like jokes. Uh, Godfather of alt comedy, I would say. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. My favorite joke is probably the bridge joke. It's like a joke that takes probably like 15 minutes to tell, you know? It's the, the like premise. the aristocrat? No, it's a pre <laughs> the premise is that somebody is going to like jump off a bridge and kill themselves, but he has a face that looks like he looks like a head of a horse. And so he goes back and forth with this guy about like not killing himself and about God and about, you know all this stuff and then it comes down to like oh you're a christian i'm a christian and then they go back and forth between their denominations and getting like more and more minutely different yeah, until yeah. it's until the very end he tells him to like you know he's a heretic and pushes him off well you it's heard brilliant. about the the recent joke spoiler bridge situation right now what's that bon jovi bon jovi bon jovi oh bon jovi sorry i put too much p i was yeah. like no he saved somebody they were about to jump off the bridge and jo bon jovi was there and he like don't oh. jump and he started saying she came that's back beautiful. over and they embraced and everyone was like taking pictures that's beautiful yeah wow. well if, if we, you're about to die and bon jovi shows you're like well maybe there is a guy yeah i agree with that i, I don't listen to him <laughs> at all you know hair yeah <laughs> who would show up and you'd be like i'm still going yeah well, that would be so depressing tom, he tom would holland imagine that <laughs> billy joel shows up you're like i don't know yeah. sorry fuck this tom, tom mcdonald shows up and goes yeah like, hey bro Come on, you got you got so much to live for. Well, we're gonna tell. Let, Hawk we'll get to a girl. <laughs> Hawk to a girl. <laughs> Storytelling is a great part of comedy. We got some stories coming up in the second half of this show, so please stay tuned to us on Patreon. Check us out if you haven't already. We're gonna continue with Dan Rosen. Thank you guys for joining. Sign so much. up for the goods. Yeah, it's a good shit. Well, the really. Next part. But is before we go, a story about me being kidnapped. That's so. true. You want to stay tuned, but Dan, tell them where they can find you, uh, where they can follow you, and where um, you're, what you're doing next. The Dan Rosen. Uh, on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and all that. Uh, and I have a podcast now, too, who does not. It's called Middlebrow. So check that out. Middlebrow, good show. All right, go out there, check it out, and we'll see you in a minute.